A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> In the early days of the western United States, there was a great deal of trouble along the border between Mexicans and Americans. Most of the trouble was caused by outlaws. When the masked rider of the plains brought law and order to the frontier, the honest men of both countries found peace and understanding. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading south for Scorpion Bend! The town of Scorpion Bend, like most others situated near the border, had a well-populated Mexican quarter. Pancho Cardoza, despite his comparative youth, was commonly looked upon as its leader, There were a few occasions when he showed himself to be other than lighthearted and friendly. The afternoon our story opens was an exception, however. While his small children and pretty wife looked on, his face darkened with anger, and he grasped the bridle of a horse standing before his door. A sullen-featured fellow attempted to strike his hand away. Give me my horse, blast you! Madre de Dios! This is not your caballo. No, no, it's mine. I'll pay for him. You will not take him from me. You dirty thief! This horse belonged to Big T. Emmett, and he gave it to me when he paid me off. That is not so. I buy him from the Senor Emmett. I pay $200. You ask him, he will say I speak the truth. He won't say nothing of the kind. Pig! Why, you blasted breed! Rock me, Pancho Cardoza. I am no breed. No, no, I am Mexicano. Who in blazes cares what you call yourself? You give me that horse before I let daylight kill you. Let loose. I keep him. Oh, you will, will you? No. Take it. Oh, oh, gringo dog, you've killed my husband. I scratch your eyes. I kill you, you've killed my pasho. Get back, Cut get away from me. No, Anita, I am not killed. Stay back. Me, oh, pancho. I will handle this pig. You want more, eh? Well, you get just what you deserve when pancho. you get out. Pancho, it is the gringos. They come here. See? That is Senor Emmett. Oh, he come. Now he will tell you this caballo is mine. He will tell you I paid for him. Senor, Senor Emmett. There he is, man. There's one of them thieving breeds. That the horse? If he stole it, we'll hang him. Swing him up for a lesson to the others, blaster. It's time we put a stop to what's been going on around here. Senor Emmett, this hombre, he said I do not buy this caballo from you. He said you give it to him. He tell the lie. What, Saint? You had the nerve to say I sold you that horse? Uh, you... You say I do not buy him from you? Why, well, of course you didn't. But, but I pay you $200, senor. Yeah? Well, I give this horse a rip here for wages. Unless you bought it from him, you stole it. Where's your bill of sale if you bought the horse? Bill of sale? What is that? I pay the money. Senor Emmett, he said it's all right. I take the horse. What more must I do, eh? Why, right, Thunder, you sure got your nerve. First you steal a horse from Rip here, then you try and say I'm lying. But, senor... Let's I... not argue with the polecat, fellas. 
My horse ain't the only one that's been stolen late. There's been a plenty besides. On top of that, there's been hold-ups and killings. And you don't have to look no farther than these here breeds to find the stunts that are to blame. Right, and it's right. time we took the law into our own hands. Drive the breeds out of town. Get them rope next time. Tell them who's boss and Scorpion Ben. Grab him, man. Throw him on a horse. No, no, I do not steal. I do not harm you, know me, senors. I am Pancho Cardoza. I am honest hombre. Put your wine oh, out. Come on. Take oh, him to the edge of town. Take him to the big court. Oh, hey, 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 no, senor. No, this I pray for listen, amigo. Pacho! Pacho! Oh, my pretty Dios. What they do with him? Oh, oh Mio Pacho. Mio, Mio Pacho. <laughs> Mask man mounted upon a great white horse and accompanied by an Indian noticed the mob as it made its way to the edge of town. They drew their mounts to a halt behind the cover of a clump of trees. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. What's going on over there, Kimasabi? There's plenty fella. It looks like plenty trouble. Uh, they're coming closer. And head for tree? Yes. You see him? To that cottonwood. Wait. Who's that man they're dragging with him? Tato, can you make him out? Uh, it's not easy. Try it, Tato. Try. It's a fellow I think it is. It fellow named Pancho. Pancho Cardoza. Uh, Pancho never harmed anyone in his life. There's big Steve Emmett. He's carrying a rope in his hand. That's right. And if they're not getting ready for a hanging, then I've never seen a lynch party before. What we do? We can't let them hang Pancho. Even if he were a known crook, which he isn't, I'd suspect the judgment of any crowd that included big Steve. Him, bad feller. Tonto, listen to me. Uh -huh. Circle to the left of that mob. Tonto, do that. Fire several shots in the air. Draw their attention without getting within range. Uh -huh. Then I'll ride for Pancho from the other direction. If I get him free, I'll meet you at our camp. You understand? Me, Savvy. Then get going. I'll wait until they see you. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Steady, old fellow. Steady. I see him, boy. All right, Silver. Now to get Poncho. Come on, fellow. Come on. <laughs> With the attention of the lynch mob drawn to the masked man's faithful Indian companion, the Lone Ranger sent Silver racing toward the cottonwood where the mob had halted. He was almost upon them before they noticed his approach and... More shoot! He's the master! He's got the Get him! Get him! One side! Stand aside to get trampled! Hey, blast that on behind the saddle! Head the punch off! Diablo! Grab hold! Oh. Oh. The next will come closer. Come on, Silver, come on. Don't let that arm break it away. He come closer, smash in my hand. I'll drill him. Yeah. You missed. How are you going to hit him traveling like that? You fools. There they go. The masked man and poncho. And you had them both right in your hands. <laughs> Safely away from the mob, the Lone Ranger headed Silver for the secret camp he shared with Ponto. There he listened to Poncho's story. So you paid for the horse, Poncho, but Big Steve denied it. See, si, amigo, tell you so. I swear it. He said I am a thief, and them hombre, they said they will hang me. And if you have not arrived, senor, they do that thing. This has been coming for a long time, Poncho. See, si? I mean the trouble today. There have been too many thefts, too many holdups in the district that have gone unpunished by the law. The men are angry and restless. Today, they broke out and attempted to take the law into their own hands. But I am not guilty, amigo. I never doubted it. Then why you Look say... at it this way, Pancho. The men behind these crimes that have been committed know that someone must pay. They know the temper of the people in the town. From their point of view, their safest course would be to fix the guilt on someone else. It is not fair, compadre. Always I have been the man of peace. Always me, Pancho. I mind my own business and meddle not with that of others. But now they would hang me. My Juanita, my children, I cannot return to them. I have no home. And I'm afraid others of your race will find themselves in the same fix. Huh? When tempers are high, it's easy to lose all sense of justice and judgment. Mobs don't reason, Pancho. All mobs desire is a chance to punish someone, anyone. You've escaped them. 
Your friends may not. You speak the truth. I hope that you... And now Pancho knows what must be done. You have a plan? Si, senor. What? Uh, That I cannot tell you. Today you have saved my life. That I will never forget. But still you are... Forgive me, senor. Gringo. You are of the same race as those who would harm me and my people. There are things you must not know. I think I understand you, Pancho. Perhaps. And if you have in mind what I suspect, if you mean to strike back, I'd advise you to forget it for the present. No, no, that is impossible. At least wait until you can learn who is responsible for this and who isn't. Don't forget that many of those men you just escaped honestly believed you guilty. We will speak of it no more, senor. As you wish. What will you do now? Where will you go? You have no horse. I have friends, amigo. Soon I will have the fine caballo. Very well. And now, amigo, I must leave you. It may be that you do not see Pancho again. But this I promise you, senor. You will hear of me. And soon. Shortly after the departure of Pancho Cardoza, the lone ranger, wearing a disguise, rode toward Scorpion Bend. Concealing his horse at the edge of town, he made his way to the cafe owned by Big Steve Emmett and silently listened to the talk of the men inside the place. He stayed throughout the afternoon and into early evening. And then... Fellas! You know what's happened, fellas? Have you heard the news? What's the excitement? Every last breed in town has cleared out and left their wives and kids behind. What? What can't you say? It's a fact, Steve. Me and some of the boys was just down that way, figuring to get our hands on some of Poncho's friends. But there wasn't a breed to be found. Every dog on one sneaked away. Because they savvy what's good for them. Yeah, they're next, most likely. Kid looks that way. Hold up. Didn't nobody see him go? Didn't nobody get a sight of him at all? They're couldn't define them, and see. Fellas, their disappearing is just the same as admitting they've been behind all the thieving that's been going on. If they hadn't known themselves to be guilty, there wouldn't have been any reason for them lighting out. Perhaps you're mistaken. Perhaps they left town because they feared they wouldn't receive justice. Or perhaps they believed it the best way to stop trouble for the present. Hey, who are you, stranger? That's my business. What's your idea in sticking up for them dirty coyotes? And who asked your opinion in the first place? Horses have been stolen and sold across the border. The same with cattle. There's been a dozen holdups and half a dozen unexplained killings. But how many of you here have got actual evidence that Mexicans are involved? Say, shut you up, Rip. What the I said, shut up. Stranger. Yes? Where'd you come from? That's my business also. On the dodge, eh? Well, I ain't never seen you around before today. Don't reckon anybody else here has either. What I mean is this. If we ain't seen you, you couldn't have been around these parts for long. And if you ain't spent no time here, you're hardly in a position to know what's been going on. I say them breeds are behind the crookedness around here. And so do these other fellas. We know the facts. It'd pay you to agree with them instead of lining up on the wrong side. Savvy? I see what you mean. (laughs) I thought you would. But I'm acquainted with certain facts also. Yeah? For instance... It's obvious that a gang is behind these thefts, holdups, and killings. They're certainly not the work of men acting alone. You bet there's been a gang. And Poncho Cardoza's been the head of it. I doubt it. Oh, you got a notion of your own, eh? I have. About the gang and who's heading it? Right. Care to name names? I'd be glad to. All right, mister. Name them. Most of the gang is in this cafe right now. And Steve Emmett, you're the head of it. No, you don't. Stand back. Why? The first man here to reach for a gun tastes lead. Curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. In the midst of the uproar created by his accusation, the Lone Ranger, his guns holding back the crowd, back to the door of the cafe, then suddenly disappeared. An hour later, once again wearing his mask, he arrived at the camp where Tonto was waiting for him. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, you ride hard. And we'll ride harder before we're through, Tonto. I see Scout still saddled. Uh huh. Call him. Here, Scout. What we do? First, we're going to find Pancho Cardoza. Me follow him, like you say. Me know where him go. Good work, Kimasabi. Was Pancho alone when you saw him last? Uh huh. Well, I don't think we'll find him alone now. Get mounted. Uh, what you find in town? Not much, Tonto. But I made Big Steve believe I knew more than I did. And if I'm not mistaken, that's going to trap him. Uh-huh. If you know the way, ride ahead, Tonto. There's no time to waste. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Away! As they rode, the Lone Ranger told his plan to Tonto. Meanwhile... After Poncho had secured a horse and had sent word to his friends in town, they had joined him one by one in the well-hidden canyon Poncho had chosen to make his hideout. When all the men from the quarter were gathered together, Poncho called for attention. Amigos, listen to me. Listen to me, Poncho Cardoza, who had been called a thief by the green goats. Our homes, they are not safe. That we have worked most hard and have been most peaceable is mean nothing. <laughs> no, the gringos say we steal and kill. They say all that is happened is the fault of us. But I ask you, amigos, shall we let them do these things to us? No, 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 no. Shall we let the gringo drive us from our homes? No, 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 no. Or shall we join together and do to the gringo what to us has been done? Pancho, no, 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 no. look! He's here, dog of a gringo. Hit me. The gringo have told me to leave town. And here, here is this car where a gringo bullet has come near to kill me. But Pancho, what would you have us do? We are many. You, Manuel, si. Pablo, si. Juliano, si. Chico, si. all of you. You all have suffered by the gringo. Si. They say we are mucho male hambre, that we are outlaws. Then, amigos, let us be outlaws. The gringo shoot us. We shoot the gringo. He steal from us. We steal from him. He drive us from our home. We drive him from his. Amigos, now is the time we must act together. Just to the gringo. The gringos must die. Amigo, we shall hide in the hills. We shall strike and run. And never shall we be found. And we shall pay them back once, twice, a hundred times. And we shall have admission. This is a gringo with a mask. Kill the gringo. Diablo, no, no. This man is my friend. He has saved my life. He is not to be harmed. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome, senor, with the mask. Kill him. This gringo is my compadre. The man who would fight him must first fight me. Sacre, do not act like little children. What has brought you here, senor? Oh, you find me. Tonto found you, Pancho. See? I came here because I heard your friends had secretly left town. I knew that could mean but one thing. Senor, you are my friend, but you must not interfere. This is no place for you, amigo. Pancho, I know how you feel. We do not... Listen, go- I know what it must mean to be forced from your home, to leave your family behind you with no hope of seeing them again. I realize what happened to you would soon have happened to these others here. Well, then, no, wait till I finish. I told you before I understood what was in your mind. Now I'm certain that I was right. You're bitter because you're unjustly blamed. You're bitter at this moment against all members of my race. No, no, not you, senor. I wonder if there's one thing you've stopped to reckon with. You banded together to fight the gringos. But once you step outside the law, the homes you regret now will be lost to you forever. There'll be no turning back. There'll be no chance for peace or rest. It'll be a fight to the finish. And in the end, you'll be bound to lose. Senor, to lose is not always so bad if one has tried his best. But why lose when there's no need of it? What do you mean? Fight all of my race, honest men and outlaws alike, and the odds are hopelessly against you. That is so... But instead, pit yourselves against only those who are responsible for the trouble you're in. And you can beat them. But who are these hombres? We do not know them. I want to be your friend. I've already proved to Pancho that I'm his. You saved me from hanging, amigo. Will you trust me? Like my brother. 
As long as you and your friends are innocent, there's only one gang in this district powerful enough to have committed the crimes. The gang of St. Old Sir Emmett. Right. Big Steve Emmett is behind all this, as surely as you see me here. You wish we kill him? Not that, Pancho. Any killing necessary must be handled by the law. But the law will not catch him. Do as I say, Pancho, and it will. And that? This afternoon and early evening, I was in town in disguise. Si? I'm going to use that same disguise again. But what we do? Tonto knows what I have in mind. If I ask you, will you follow his orders? See. Si. Then follow them without question. You'll catch Big Steve and clear yourselves. Tonto, uh? remain here. I'll return to camp. Tonto, do that. Before tomorrow's done, our work here will be finished. Adios, amigos. Adios, senor. Adios. Adios, silver. Away. The Lone Ranger's bold accusation had left Big Steve Emmett uneasy. For the benefit of the townspeople, he laughed and pretended indifference. But late the following afternoon... At a table in a shadowed corner of his cafe with no listeners but two of his own men, he confessed his anxiety. I don't like it. What did that stranger say that for? What's he know, anyhow? He wouldn't have had the nerve to talk like that to me if he didn't figure he could back it up. I've been thinking the same thing, Steve. And I've been thinking something. Yeah, Rip? What's become of that stranger? Nobody recollects seeing him head here. He ain't been seen on any of the trails leaving town. It ain't natural, it... It's like he could disappear just whenever he pleased. Somebody's seen a masked man riding west. A masked man? Yeah. That couldn't be him. What would be the sense of him wearing a mask outside of town after he'd showed his face inside town? Well, I just mentioned What it, is it, uh... boss? You figure the stranger had some kind of proof he could use against you? Yeah, it don't seem like it. If he had, why didn't he use it? Yeah. Blast it all, I can't be sure. Maybe he's got proof, but don't hanker to use it yet. Maybe he aims to make me pay for him to keep his mouth shut. That's just it. I ain't gonna have no peace of mind till I know just what he's up to. Been doing anything to find him? Well, I told the boys to keep their eyes open. Not much use in a regular search when you have no idea where to start it. Yeah. Judd? Boss, listen here. Eh? Recollect that stranger was in here yesterday? Of course I do. We've just been talking about him. Well, I think I know where he's to be found. What's that? I think I've seen him. Way about. Talk, bless you, talk. Well, give me a chance. You got one. If the stranger's the same fella I seen today, he's camped over near where them gullies cut into the woods. You mean that? Why, sure I do, Steve. Why would I be telling it to you if I didn't? He's Round the... up the boys. What do you Get want? on your feet and do like I tell oh, you. Sure, sure, boss, but what is... You'll get every man of mine that's in town and see that they're healed. We're catching that stranger and making him talk. In the woods near Scorpion Bend, the Lone Ranger bent over his campfire. He held an iron skillet containing several strips of bacon. Slightly back and behind him stood his powerful white stallion, Silver. The great horse was uneasy. He pranced nervously and... Easy, old fellow, easy. Hungry boy? Back, Silver, back. You'll be trampling the fire. Get back. You'll be fed soon, old boy. But I thought with all your grazing this afternoon, you'd be full up. The horse ain't hungry, mister. What? They're coming. Get your hands in the air. Come on, boys, close in. All right, all right. Watch Big Steve. Sure, that's who it is. <laughs> Give you a turn, did I? You can't. Keep your hands high. Start dropping them again, I'll let you have it. Very well. And if you're thinking of jumping this here shooting iron, look about you. There's eight besides me that's got you covered. You like the odds in your favor, huh? No lip, stranger. If you hadn't been such a fool as not to see that your horse there was trying to tell you something was wrong, maybe we wouldn't have had it so easy. Well? What, I should rough him up a bit, boss? Not till I give the word. You heard him, stranger. You gonna talk? Maybe you'd better tell me what I should talk about. Don't get lippy. I think... All right, stranger, no use your stolen. You savvy why I'm here. Do I? Blast you, I'll take you off your high horse. You made some remarks in my cafe last night. You made it right plain you figured I was heading an outlaw gang. Stranger, let's see your proof. 
So that's what you're after, huh? Either you got proof or you was just running a bluff. Whichever it was, we ain't leaving here till we know. So commence talking. One of your men killed both driver and guard on the Ridgefield stage a month ago. Say, what's he getting at? Keep shut. All right, stranger, keep on. Those are only two killings out of a half a dozen or more. But I wonder if the men you sent to rob that stage made sure its crew was dead before they left. Just what do you mean by that? I wonder how positive you are that I didn't arrive on the scene in time to get a written statement from the driver before he died. That's what you got. Rip! Now, boss. You was in charge. You said everything went all right on that job. You came back and said there wasn't nobody left alive that could talk. How are you going to explain that after what you just heard this fella say? Boss, he's lying. They was dead. I know blame well they was. Ask the fellas here. They was along. Fellas, was they able to talk after we left them? No. no, no Steve, no. there wasn't a single job you ever sent us on that we mucked. We never make a fool mistake like that. And how are you going to explain after what this train... Hey, what's what that? It's going? them reeds. And there's a sheriff with them. Why, you dirty... Stop that gun. You are... oh. Next time, obey orders. I'm here to go. It's well done. You have freaked them. Drop your guns and reach for the sky. You're surrounded and you ain't got a chance. Does uh, this tell you the truth about the gang that's been operating in your district, Sheriff? Stranger, you're right, it does. I heard every doggone word was said. I ain't denying I was confounded mad when Poncho and that engine there grabbed me and made me go with them. But now I'm confounded glad they done it. But how'd you know we were here? How'd you Steve, think? Steve, one of your men reported he'd seen me. Yeah, but I, I let him see me. I knew you'd want to talk with me after the things I said last night. I wanted to talk here where the woods gave my friends cover. You took the bait and the trap closed. I wish I'd blasted you down when I first seen you. <laughs> yeah, but you did not, senor. And it is well for you. But if you had shot my friend, you would have died most unpleasantly. Juanzo, you and your companions are free to return to your homes. Amigo, first it is to you I owe my life. And now I, I owe you this much more. It is a debt I can never pay in full. And one I'll never ask you to pay, Pancho. Yep. <laughs> Ready, Tonto. Me ready. Hail Silver! Get him up, go! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.